Hi, Amanda Armstrong, and welcome to the back office, Teardown Lab. We are going to be repairing this. It's a quad 33, I don't know what you call these. These are like an AV switch, tuner -y thing. You've got volume, bass treble, um, I don't know what slope is, to be honest with you. And then there's these filters, like your graphics equalizer back in there. Then you've got disc, which isn't CD, of course, it's record. Radio 1, Radio 2, tape. Stereo, mono right, mono left. And I don't know what this is. I'm guessing that's a balance control of some description. So this would have been high end, as far as I'm aware. But check this out. Um, there's your serial number, 7936. 7936. And it's got all of these really cool DIN connectors on the back, and they've got a nice panel that's kind of pressed out. They've, I'm going to zoom in, actually, because it might be a little bit unclear to you. Let's pop this on the deck so it's nice and steady. So you can see it's embossed. It's got this nice embossed writing on it. But what's really cool, and I was sort of having a little bit of a fiddle about this earlier, is that you can open these things up, and it actually has kind of edge connectors. So there's additional functionality on these edge connectory uh, devices. And I'm, I'm guessing, for example, this one, you can see it's something to do with the tape adapter. Um, and then if you look on the back of the PCB, it says quad 33, left replay, replay right record. So there's all this sort of circuitry and adjustment on these, these edge cards. I think it went in that way. And then let's have a quick look at the other side. <laughs> oh my word. That one is tight. And there you go, what's that one? That's the disc adapter. So, I mean, these could be like preamps and stuff like that. This is crazy, because it looks like you could almost turn it round, couldn't you? Different angles and pop that in. I kind of feel it might be worth me just uh, <laughs> taking this little Sharpie and I'll just I'll just put a little wee, a wee arrow here on this contact, because it's easy to clean off on the contact if we need to. And then you could see that when you put some of these in, perhaps, obviously they, they're sort of doing something internally to the inputs and outputs, but you could probably also interface to stuff outside of this uh, device. So this was given to me uh, by my father to work on, because he's got a broader system with all of the electrostatic speakers and whatnot, then external, you have, these have external amplifiers by the way, they're not part of this box. Because um, something, you know, up with it, it's just messing around a bit, and he's purchased this from Dada. <laughs> Appropriately, Dada has purchased from Dada Electronics the Quad 33 uh, recapping kit. And it also comes with a bunch of resistors and things, so it's a little bit more involved. But let's pop the lid. I mean, let's just figure out how to go about this. So just get those cards out. Um, I think I can't mess up that one, and I've already marked that one, so that's good. Um, if I recall, though, you can find for these the schematics. So they, they, this old, old hi-fi equipment um, is kind of really serviceable because you do have all of the schematics available so you can get going. And it is, of course, flathead, um, which kind of a little bit worried. If you um, go awry on a flathead, they have this uh, thing when the, the head spins out. I think it's called camming out. And if it cams out, obviously they can do a little uh, a little number on your metalwork, draw a nice pattern on there. So we're gonna try to avoid that because I don't wanna damage this too much. I mean, it, it's obviously not aged amazingly well. Oh my God, these are long. If I just show you again, briefly from the front, what it's looked like, but, but you know, the metalwork and things, it's it's been used. I mean, that's what's nice about it. It's just a used piece of equipment. It may well be possible to find the paint match for this and actually just do a full restoration on it, but maybe that's something that would come after you uh, get it working. Wow, this is heavy duty. So this this metal case is a proper metal case. It's not messing around here. We might have to take the feet out. Oh, there we go. Look at that. <laughs> that's not going anywhere. It's like its own rack. <sighs> wow. Oh my word, there's a lot of... I'm hearing a bit of rattling here, which I don't like the sound of. That is amazing. So it does have real PCBs, which is nice. But look at this wiring, it's beautiful, look at this. I'm going to just zoom in, because it's just... You need to see it, look at that. It's like a kind of quite thick wire, and it's all, you know, being... A ribbon cable that's all nicely put around. Now are all these edge cards... 
I'm just going to... My word, they are. Look at that design. I mean, if you imagine your uh, piece of Amstrad or, you know, <laughs> sharp or something equipment at the day, I, I don't think they'd have had at this level of sophistication where you can actually replace and swap these out. I wonder if there were options on this so when you were buying it, depending on the the type of uh, source you were going to put to it, you would choose maybe some of these cards. I'm just going to pop these out. I'm hoping there is some instructions actually. I didn't check, of course, but there's probably something on the website to show what these are for. I mean, I'm just pulling out the uh, main cards because I just assume it's going to be for these. I mean, you could just check some of these values. You've got these 2.2 microfarad caps. So let's see what we've got here. Yeah. Okay. 2200 microfarad. Yeah, probably not that one. 1000 microfarad. There's not enough caps actually in here, so they're probably not for these. You've only got a few in there. Um, so pop that there. Look at this thing. It's a nice potentiometer here with a nice switch on it. So this black piece here on the end is the switch. And then you've got two here, one for the left channel and one for the right channel. And what's really nice, you can see in here, you see the pattern that's on here. These markings actually go all the way through. It was machined out of a big lump of aluminium or something. Um, whoa. And inside there, just in there, have a look. There's something weird. You've got another potentiometer. Do you see that there? I think that was that control at the bottom. When we were talking about the balance control. Look at that. So when we turn this knob here, this balance slider. Ooh, that's that's a good action, that is. High end, indeed. Then this quad um, logo. If I recall, this quad logo used to illuminate. So in there, there's probably a neon shining through that. Right, so I think I'm going to probably uh, work my way into this a little bit so we can just kind of try to ascertain what those components are from. I mean, just, just before I do that, just before that, let's just switch this over um, onto its rear. You can see, of course, they do have some PCBs here with all of these switches and things. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll probably be watching this video I should probably record myself doing it so I can watch this back in reverse. Okay, the website does have a manual, but I don't have a login because I'm lazy. Uh, I'm sure my father has a login because he, he would have already got the manual and I can't get hold of him. So what I thought I would do though is try to remove this board because I'm pretty sure this board has got this really kind of crackly, crumbly looking capacitor. So it's probably what we need to do because the boards underneath don't actually have that many components on it. So as this wire is a bit like just that through hole um, wire wrap type wire, I kind of feel like there, you can see I'm just holding that. If I'm very gentle and don't disturb the wiring too much, I'll be able to put the board out and then pop it back in and all of these wires should hopefully just line up to where they came from. That's the my logic. We're going to attempt that. Um, this bit is an interesting one, of course. So I'm just I'm just touching these with the soldering iron anyway. It's so beautiful. You're beautiful. Oh my gosh, that is that a ring of wire? The ring of wire. Yeah. <laughs> Let's come back to that one. We'll just attempt now to take these ones off. So that's got nice old school leaded solder on there and I've kind of shifting to unleaded and you forget, you forget how good the old leaded stuff is. That's your yellow. So I had a look on um, eBay just now. So these are quad preamps. And there was one, one on there for £150, which is probably good value if you're in the market for one. There's not much to go wrong in here. It's a lot of switches, so you could get dirty switches, but apart from that, I think you're going to be okay. You can see there, now that's shifted. So let's see if we can just get this wire off. So it's got a ring around it. Someone's, it's just probably a loop that someone's bent over on itself, but I'm kind of 
see if we can. Uh, I can just slide it off the end. Yes! There we go. That wasn't too bad. So let's have a look. We'll zoom back out again. See where we are with this. So that wire there. We, I don't want to bend the wires too much in case they snap. So now we're going to need a finer flathead screwdriver, and it's amazing. I've just I have got some, and they've just been sitting there doing nothing for years because you don't really use them for anything anymore. That's one. Even the screws look like they're painted. My word. I think there's another screw hiding. Yes, there is. Right there. So I think that's a transformer in a tin, what we're looking at, by the way. In case you were wondering what's that lump of stuff. Okay, got that. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Nice. Nice work there. Let's see if we can read these capacitors. So these are 640 microfarad and that's a 400 microfarad so let's see if any of these match <laughs> no not at all <laughs> well it's nice to have it dismantled anyway isn't it i can just put all the pieces here ready ready to go when we're ready <laughs> with the instructions took a bit of hunting but there is some instructions and it says 15 pages but i think it was actually a few more more like 17 pages once you print them However, it does go through in some detail about how to start with this. So you can see basically it's quite pictorial and it does seem quite a lot of this kit is for replacing a number of these parts on the power supply. Um, it's a little bit worrying because if you recall we attached these by pins but then in the picture they're showing it without the pins so I'm hoping I'm hoping it's a little bit simpler. So I'm gonna to have to actually read through these, I think, and study them up before I touch anything because the downside of this, you're upgrading this and fixing it potentially, yeah? Um, an interesting enough, by the way, you have a 240 volt coil and a, um, it says here, 127, 250 and a 127. Um, the more we do to this, it's kind of the more we're taking away from it somehow because it's not original so it's kind of a shame isn't it and looking at the pictures you do end up with something very very different than what you start with it seems a little savage but the instructions call to remove everything that's right they're saying literally remove everything here but those pins um, so yeah that seems a bit mean I have lent out my electrical solder sucker Doohickey. So we are going to be going full manual on this one. If you haven't got one, I always advise get a manual solder sucker. And I guess we're just going to start on it. There's nothing more to say really. It does look... Let's have a check. I was going to say it does look like the pins might be bent over, but no, my mistake. And that's very fortunate because if you've got bent over pins, it does make everything so much more difficult. In fact, oh, look at this. Out the gate, hey, out the gate. I wonder if we could do this without suck sucking, let's see. I'm just gonna try this one without sucking by just gently twisting, yeah, there you go. Just twisting the cap. We will have to clear out all the holes, of course. Because we're not too worried about that. Oh, light work. Now let's have a look from the top, okay. We just wanna make sure though, we do not take out any of those pins. <laughs> These look pretty good condition though, really. I don't know. You sure you want to take them out? I mean, how, how dead can a resistor be? Still, put them in a pile. We're gonna keep those. The instructions do have the schematic, so I think we can reconstruct it if we needed to. However, if you're doing this at home, maybe take a photo on your camera because uh, that's something I didn't do. And I'm kind of rapidly thinking that I might regret that if I'm not careful. Here's another one. We're getting there. It's not too bad at all. This could be a quick job. It'll probably take me longer to 
figure out the values of the replacement components and where they should go. So apparently what I, um, from what I read in the little manual thing just now, and it was a cursory glance, that this power supply had some sort of remote switching capability on it that was never used. So I suspect a lot of these components could be down to that and the fact you've got uh, here what look like, what are these? Are these transistors? Electrolyt strange electrolytics? Weird. Um, I think these are part of it basically because the, they don't appear to be replaced with anything, you're just pulling them out. So get that one off. Look at that, it looks like an electrolytic in a hard crispy case, like a Malteser. If you're not from the UK, a Malteser is a type of candy. Right, so that's all bar one now. In case you're wondering, I'm using a TS100 soldering iron, and uh, I recommend them. I uh, am very pleased with that. And if you're doing this at home, it's probably a good point now in your mission <laughs> to bag all these up. You never know, right? You just never know when you might want to go back to retro, or you're going to sell this, or something doesn't work by the end of the process, and you, you don't end up regretting that you can't undo what you... Uh, did. So you want to do the whole Sam Beckett quantum leap so you can put right what you want to put wrong. <laughs> right. Um, now technically because you're not populating all these holes you don't really need to clean them all out. You only need to clean the ones that you're going to populate. But I would advise you just do them all because life's too short isn't it really sometimes. It's probably quicker to do this than just think about which ones you have to, to do. Time for me to get a new solder sucker tip. Do you have any advice for me on a good place to get a good solder sucker tip? And I hear now all you young young kids are uh, using those cool silicone tips. So I could try a silicone tip because I, uh, I have these kind of hard plastic ones on these, and they do tend they do tend to deteriorate. Now something I just noticed now. Just there, there was a sl oh no, me suckers, me suckers failed. There's a slight bridge there and I just cleaned it off because there's no solder resist on there. So just be a bit careful with that. You don't want to, you don't want to introduce a fault. Oh, me, 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 me tips blocked. Hang on, let's get that clear. You can see I just blew all that solder uh, detritus across my bench don't do that because of course you're gonna one get probably some sort of rash or allergy from it but two oh what is going on here it might react electrically to something you're working on and that's gonna be bad news I've I've I've, I've come a cropper me uh, sucker me sucker needs the full service the trigger mechanism's gone on it ah oh. Right, and if you're unlucky, you might have one of these type of solder suckers that you get in the cheap kit, so we'll try it out. Maybe it'll do the trick. Yeah, no. It's got such a wide end, I don't see how it could possibly do the job. Right, let's not go uh, too much further because we're at our pins now. So what I'm just going to do is, I'm just going to see here where I've got a little bit of solder onto the, the PCB. I'm just going to remove the lumps by spreading it out a bit. And what you can do, if, you, if you're doing your own PCB as well, you can buy a chemical tinning compound. I can't remember what it's made of. Um, and you can actually just dump your whole copper PCB and it will deposit this tin on it after a few minutes. It's not... It's not um, it's like a magic process, really. You just chuck it in the uh, vat of crystals. And uh, it's all good. So here's our instructions again. There's our board ready to go. And I can see here you need the big three electrolytics. And what it's saying here, it does actually have component numbers here. And you have a, I think it was a previous page. <laughs> you do have a uh, schematic somewhere which has all of those numbers. It was on there somewhere. 
I'm sure I'm not going totally mad. There you go. So it's telling you which ones you're replacing. So you can't really go wrong. I'm just going from memory because I just recognize that there was only three big electrolytics in the kit. And the rest of the components, of course, you've got a few resistors and diodes for this, but the rest of these other components are all for different parts of the uh, radio. So obviously this is the radio, <laughs> the, the um, amplifier. So the first part, of course, is this power supply. So after the power supply is done, we'll be going through the others. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through, get all the parts ready, and we'll just solder them on. Look through the instructions, got out the right parts. Uh, most of them are pretty cool and easy, but uh, the, I did need to find a couple of standard diodes um, myself. So these are 1N400 somethings, um, not included in the kit. So I kind of think that's a bit mean though, isn't it? If you're going to make a kit, surely include those basic diodes, just because it's, it's hassle to have to buy them. I mean, I'm pr pretty sure. Oh no, I'm saying that. I'm saying that like a, I'm a whinger. I'm whinging. A whinger ninja. And there, there they are, sitting there in the kit. Okay, I'm going to take these out of the kit <laughs> and put these on my shelf. Shut up, Andrew. Just start soldering. Idiot. <laughs> okay, so uh, the first things first you have two electrolytic capacitors. Um, again, just follow the picture, really. but make sure the polarity is correct the way you put them in does matter so i'm going to pop them in like that and it's a shame that they're not quite the right footprint so it's up to you what you want to do um i would suggest just making some dog legs here to just kink out the the legs slightly with your tweezers or pliers in fact i'll do it off the thing so you can see what i'm up to you're just doing that basically look and that's widening your pins a teeny tiny touch and then they'll go in a bit easier and what you can do is once you get them in like that then you can push down a little bit and they'll sit nice and flat so that's pretty good we'll do the same for the next one because they're both the same capacitors and they're both replacing the same type of capacitors so the chances are you would definitely so that's probably good enough too. Pop that through. So make sure you push them home like that. And what I like to do, I flipped it over obviously. Uh, I don't have any fancy mechanism for holding up the capacitors or components while I'm soldering. So I'll just solder them like that once. Then I'm going to put my thumb behind it and just heat that joint again so I can push up with a bit of positive pressure. And if they're not sitting home, by the end of this process they will be <laughs> and uh, yeah I'm just laughing at myself at uh, not being able to find those diodes which were clearly staring me right in the face but that's how it goes sometimes though isn't it that's how it goes sometimes we are all fallible chop the legs off do a neat job pretend you're working in quad and you care and there you go look at those lovely lovely pieces and that they don't they look the same there you go if they look the same you're doing all right now we're just going to pop through our diodes now i didn't do it but i can show you something so i do have this 3d printed doodad here and you can just 3d print these yourself uh, have a look see what you need um and then you just bend them over like that in in this tool sorry about the focus And you pop them right in, and that should be good. So I'm wondering why my camera seems to be hunting on the focus, and the reason is I have uh, changed one of the modes on the camera, and I think I haven't changed it back. So we might do a little jump cut in a minute, and then that way, when I'm moving things back and forward in the frame, It won't uh, go blurry as much. So you can see there anyway, I've popped them through, I've bent the legs slightly. I'm probably not gonna push these through from the back because I think they're held pretty firm. And it's a joy to solder, to be honest with you, it's a joy to solder. Lovely big through hole pads, lovely thick 
component wires. I mean, it's all child's play. You could do this with the cheapest Rolson soldering iron kit that your grand's got you for Christmas. So you're going to be okay, a okay on this project, guys. It's really old school. Just check the checking the diodes here, making sure that I've got them the right way round. I'm just going by the picture. I'm not doing anything fancy. Just going by pictures. It's like painting by numbers. Now we do have to fit in these rather chunky boys. Chunky boys, B-O-I-S. Chunky boy. Be a good brand of resistor, wouldn't it? Chunky boy. One watt. Oh, I got those pretty good too. I thought um, it was a bit of a guess that they would uh, be in the right section of the leg bender, but uh, that looks about right. It's good to go. Turn it over gently. Mm. I think I'm gonna have a nice cup of tea after this. I think that's uh, a reward I should be allowed to have. Because you did a good job. Pat yourself on the head. Imagine these circuit boards. These were like designed old school, back in the day, no CAD. It's amazing, isn't it? You had some serious, serious skills required. Oh, getting a little bit warm there, a little bit warm. That's looking good. Let's chop those off. One more component, and that's the power supply done. We, we, ooh, we made good time on that one. So it's not quite the same uh, as in the picture, but that's absolutely fine. In fact, it's better. They've obviously replaced this with a better laid out component. Just make sure you can see the picture there. You've got the negative on this pin. So there's your negative here. And it's saying this way. <laughs> this one is negative. Look, negative this way. So we shall put it in that way, that way. Hopefully that's right. And there's one hole blocked from earlier. It's always the one that comes to get you. Didn't do a proper job at the beginning, and now it's coming to bite you. Let's get that through. There you go. It wasn't a problem though, was it? Not really. Not in the grand scheme of things. So we're just gonna touch up this cheeky boy. Boo. I just held it on there. Do you see that? I just held it on there for a few moments extra just to make sure. And there you go. That is one reconditioned power supply ready to go back in. So I'm going to go have a cup of tea. But just to show you what's coming up next, the oh, amplifier board. How sexy is that? And I'm back with some hula hoop crisps, coffee. Mmm. -hmm. And the instructions. So, first things first, there's different revisions of these boards, so kindly they provided pictures of different revisions. So these are the amplifiers, one for each channel. I'm going to go through and mark each component I kind of want to remove. So we're going to remove that thing. And we're going to remove C405. That thing. And we're going to remove C406. <laughs> Where are you? I like how they're not really <laughs> in line with each other. C411. Oh no, R411, which is that one. So we're going to get that, that. R412, which is that one in there. <laughs> and then TR400. What's TR Triac? TR400. It's staring you in the face. There. Oh, it's just a transistor. And we'll mark that one there. Okay. So interesting enough, by the way, that previous mod on the power supply, I was just sort of reading up a little bit, and um, what it does, it increases the voltage. So rather than being 12 volts, I think it's got a better regulation or something, it's like more modern part, whatever they're doing. Um, 
and it's giving it more like 16 volts so you get a little bit more uh, head height with it. So I thought that's cute isn't it? Let's just undo these in the order. So I'm going to go first with the C401s. That's that one there, that one there. Just I'm pulling it. See so what you can't see is I'm pulling it from the other side so that comes off in your hand like that. Um, I suppose we could clean these as we go along. <laughs> these darn things. The gob is too big on them. Like that friend that gets you into trouble. Um, let's just see though if there's any indication at all of the polarity. Because remember these do have a polarity on them. It's very hard when you look at these to just sort of decide on some of these older components what do they actually mean like that. But, uh, hmm. I'm just going to put a little mark on the board which was the thin end. Anyway, we'll just whip out the one on the other side. Okay. And again, do your old sucker. Sometimes though, if you've got the solder sucker ready to go, you can use that as an opportunity to study, study your next move on your diagram. These things, my gosh, time to service them. Right, so they're gonna replace the C405. Well, we're just gonna get the ones that I've marked, basically. Let's pop those through. You've seen the process once, I'll just go through. I'll just pull them all out on one board. I'm gonna have got two fingers on this one. Yep, got it off. And we're gonna get rid of that one. So it's not a bad little project really. I was kind of worried that it's gonna be, you know, seriously a lot of work. Because there's a lot of parts, but it's nicely split up into little sections. You know kind of what you're doing. I don't know if if you've got a setup, how would you test it um apart from at the end? I think you still just test it at the end. I think it'll be okay. Okay. We had a transistor to pull out. And if you are doing it again at home, maybe it is a better idea for you to do one board at a time, just because if you make a mistake, you've got one to refer to. And we've got a couple of resistors just to pop out there. Don't think there'll be any gotchas really. Just the polarity, always watch out for the polarity of your polarity sensitive components like diodes, electrolytic capacitors, you'll be alright because you'll take your care like me. And that's it. Just looking at these other big old capacitor things, 2.2 microfarads, they look alright. Crazy. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder suck all this board off the camera, get the parts ready, and we'll just solder them back in like last time. I've done me stuff. Uh, excuse the solder spatter on here. I was blowing out the... Uh, cleaning the holes using a hot air blower. And it's a little naughty, a little bit of a naughty technique you can use. But it does make a bit of a mess, but it is super quick. So I've cleaned out both boards, and... Uh, got all, all the components. I'm just going to see what's the best way to do some of these. So the transistors, as you'll see, are a little bit naughty. <laughs> so they're naughtier than Danny Dyer. So you've got to spread the legs and pop them through like that. I'm going to just be a little bit ginger with them though because we don't want to we don't want to break break anything as we're doing it. Um, so just going to pull the middle leg out. Work that through. So just be a bit careful. I mean, these these transistors though are pretty standard. These are BC five fifties. I mean, you can. They'll cost you like a few pence each, ten pence each, something like that. So they're not like crazy expensive. But if you've bought the kit, you don't want to have to go out and order. Some. If you're really keen, by the way, and you want to do a, a decent job like a quad engineer would have done, take your time and spread them out like that. 
just exactly in the same way I didn't do for the first couple on this particular board. There you go. There's not much in it, to be honest with you. I don't think anyone's going to come and critique your work. And even if they do, are you going to, are you going to care? Probably not. I'm just going to solder those in. I would advise probably just doing them last, though, just because the capacitors and other bits and pieces are probably going to be a bit more fiddly. And these are on the outer edge of the board and some of the other components are inboard, so you want to get to those first. But now those are out of the way, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to do the second board right now, I think, again, like last time, so we'll uh, practice on one, perfect on the other. It's an interesting design though, it makes me wonder me think you could you could actually make your own versions of these boards with just modern solid state ICs if you wanted to you probably sacrilege to do that okay so we've done the three transistors the TR 400 401 and 402 what else should we do we've got our little selection of capacitors here just sitting on our bit of paper so we have the C401 which requires a 2.2, so this is a 4.7, sorry, a 20, where are we? There's a 22, no, this is the 4.7, definitely, those, those little boys, those cheeky boys. Um, and look at the diagram here, you see here, this is the 401, this is replace the 401 with a 2.2 or a 4.7, which is this tiny one. And if you recall, that was like a humongous one that was on there, that really tall piece. Now I have marked positive, you can just about see it in the light, the hole nearest the top edge is the positive. So when you're putting this new component in, you want to make sure that's bent correctly. Um, again, same trick applies really, if you want to do a decent job. Bend those legs out, give them a couple of kinked, a couple of kinky dog legs. Pop them straight through, like that. Is it possible? Is it possible that technology has moved on so much that that huge component that was in there is now replaced by that little teeny tiny one? It is, that's the answer. Because if you've done any recapping on power supplies, you'll be amazed by exactly the same thing. <laughs> So we'll just cut the legs while we're all here. So that's the one. And the next one is C405 with A47. So 405, just look at your diagram, scanning around. 405, uh, that's R405, no, that's not what we want. C405. There, staring me in the face. So it's showing you the positive again is that leg. So it's the negative going towards the bottom of the board. Checking this out here, negative's that one. We're gonna, to be honest, I'm, you can just kink one leg if you want. I'm just gonna kink the negative. You don't have to do both legs. Say it, don't splay it, eh? Pop that in there, pop that in there. I'm taking my time, doing them as I go along. Check that out, that's doing good. Drop the legs off. And we have one more of these, which is the 22 microfarad, which is going in the C406 position. And the negative here is to the rightmost side of the board, so that's okay. Negative to the rightmost side of the board. Just pop that through. What I'm going to do so I'm going to actually now push this through because it was a bit wobbly. And if you, if you know, you, you just know when you put these components in. Sometimes it feels a bit wobbly, like it wasn't sat properly. Worth just inspecting again. And something I'm going to do before I power this on, I'm going to go through this board with a magnifying glass and make sure there's no solder spatter because you don't have that solder resist. It'll be very easy to get bridge. So, uh, replace R411, which is this top right one, with a 1K, which is brown, black, black, brown, brown, which is this one, 1K. We're going to use our tool. Pop that through. 
I was almost tempted about filming this today in 4K, but I kind of felt still probably unnecessary because I could always do that and you could see if it's really, really something that you're interested in. But let me know down below, should I start filming in 4K and well, I've had 4K since the very 4K camera since the very beginning of this channel many years ago. I did try briefly in 4K, and it realised it just makes everything takes longer. So brown, orange, black, brown, brown. 1.3K in the R412 position, which I think is that one. Yes, in the middle there. You can see I've done a hand bend on this. Playing with fire. Ho oh, ho 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 ho. But he's good. He's fine. Makes it look easy. Bit of play though. Gotta check it. Sometimes you cut the legs, everything, and then you turn the board over and the thing's half sticking out. Just avoid that. A bit of hassle. I think that's one board done. My gosh, can you believe it? That's one board done. I'm gonna do a nice little zoomed in on the component side just so you can observe it a little bit just in case you're doing your own board. But I think that's the right way. The, transist the transistors, you think, oh, they could go the other way. Mm, I think I got it right. And just check out the earth. Earth on the bottom, earth on the bottom, earth on the right. I say earth, negative. And on the back, see here where they've got a little bit warm it's discolored but I'm just checking to see if there's any solder bridges and I think we are okay with our Jeff bridges we are fine so I'm gonna do the other one and um, we'll have a look what the next board there you go second one done any experiences learnt from the first transfer to the second uh, not much really apart from maybe splaying the transistor legs out uh, beforehand but even then I kind of took this one a little bit wrong didn't quite go to plan but eh, okay anyway let's just turn over and see what the next board we're going to be doing is I haven't even sipped on my coffee yet it's going to be updating upgrading the phono preamplifier boards I'm just gonna have a little, little look at me pile of boards is it that board no that board no it's gotta be boom that board and it has an awful lot of caps on it and transistors well wow. okay and we'll see what that does so a lot of work on this one you can see I've marked it up you're removing this resistor here down here you're removing this resistor and this resistor these four transistors and all the electrolytic capacitors so um, you know get to work on that because you've got a lot to get on with <laughs> Yes, pulling those off. Um, polarity wise, don't worry about it. The diagram's got it marked, but it looks like pretty much all of the the positive is towards this top edge of the board. So don't worry. Desolder. Don't worry, desolder. Do 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 don't worry. Do 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 do. Desolder. Do 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 do. Don't worry, desolder. Etc. Now, I could probably do this with a hot air blare, um, but I'm not going to, because the chances of, you know, breaking something are, are higher. They're not like massively higher, but they are higher. So, it's not my thing. I'm not going to totally uh, abuse it. But um, one of the benefits, if you do use the hot air blower for removal, is that you can clean the holes at the same time. I'm just going to show you. Let's try one, shall we? Just waiting for it to heat up. It's getting warm now. So I'm going to choose this component here. Do, 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 do. Oh no! Nah, 
forget it, forget it, forget it, forget it, forget it. It, it caused the board to actually buckle a little bit. It's just that was not worth it, was it? Yeah, this this PCB material is just not designed for it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You've got the one benefit, I suppose, that if you do damage the PCB, it is kind of easy to replace the tracking on it. Ouch, that's hot now. Yeah. <laughs> I think do it old school. Old school cool. Look how quick it is as well. You do not want to do hot air. Crikey. I feel bad about clearing the holes out with hot air now. I'm going to have to get my crappy sucker. Although I do have a roll of solder braid somewhere we could... Oh, let's do a solder braid. Extraction, shall we? I guess to get this one out. Let's try that. I need a little bit of a break from these capacitors, so we'll try clear, clearing one. So you see, you've got all of the the gunk on the board still, and here's a bit of solder braid. And it's not um, it's not fancy solder braid, so it's not fluxed. So we might have to get some flux on that. But just to show you what you do, hold it on the board and then just run your iron on it and if you can just move it slightly back and forwards just let it try to wick up that and just drag it you can see there it hasn't it hasn't sucked up the hole it hasn't done it at all because there's no flux on it so that's what it looks like if you don't have flux it's it's a struggle it's a struggle and then we've got a pot of flux here excuse me so what I'm going to do just check this out I'm going to flux up some braid and choose a bit of board, just pop a bit of flux on there while I'm at it as well. Why not get this flux out of the way, put my elbow in it. And let's go for this area here and see if it makes any more difference once you've got the flux. Mm, it's certainly sizzlier. I'm going to pull that. You can see the solder flowed. <laughs> it still doesn't clean the hole out though, does it? I think. I think you need you're gonna need a sucker though if you want to really make sure that hole is is cleaned out, and ideally one that has a trigger mechanism that works because this one, bang! I've got to I've got to do that, you know, like mm, let go doesn't doesn't help. Let's try one more. Come on, lock in, lock in. No, it's not gonna lock in. Anyway, still does the job. I'll get on and get rid of the rest of the components. So I was doing a lot of talking to camera while I was doing this and uh, I only just looked up and discovered the camera wasn't actually recording but basically it's four resistors on this. Um, these four, that's the M1 end. And you can see I've just changed these four resistors. There's two values. So this value and this value are the same and this value and this value are the same. The two center ones are 120 ohms and the two outer ones here 560 ohms. That's it. We're going to move on to do, 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 do. the tape adapter board. Boom. So just popping out the uh, components now. We're going to start with the usual capacitors that you don't need. There's only there's four capacitors on here, but I think you're only removing two, so don't go nuts until you're, until you're totally sure about that. Hello? Hmm. C200. I'm noticing a picture of this board on the bottom, though. It looks like they have replaced them all, um, but the kit only comes with two. Okay, be careful. Um, TR200 and 201, so you're getting rid of those transistors as well. Next one. That's the other. So that's your transistors, your two capacitors. What else do you have? Four resistors, R203. Just looking here. Looking on the diagram, always good to study the diagram. 203, 204, 203, 204, 205. Where's the 216? And 216. Interesting. Okay, so I'm going to pop the 216 first. You'll notice on these, it's because it's stereo, you get a lot of duplication. So. 
why I find it odd if you have an, like a, an odd number rather than an even number on the components it seems a little odd so ow ow oh hot I'm going to need some tweezers so it looks like these are all getting replaced with the same value I'm just going to double check 204 and 2 those two If you do this a lot, like you were, you know, servicing these for people, boy, you'd be so quick at it. You'd be so, so quick. Okay. I think that's it. I'll do the usual suck into the ball. Okay, that board is done. Check it out. But I noticed a few more components left, and it does seem that there are some caps on the motherboard that need to be changed. So let's have a quick look at that because this is kind of a nightmare. So we'll take out all the boards and all the spare parts that I've been collecting. So look, we've got all of those. It's nice though. It's amazing that we just rattled through all these. Oh, I can see the, uh, I can see the caps now. It's gotta be those two in there. Let's just double check that. Uh, <laughs> so yes, looking at the picture, it's those two caps in there and I'm just about to see the positive is towards that end of the board. So I'm going to do an extraction <laughs> while it's still in the case and I'm desperately searching around for my archery forceps and I do have them here, great. So if you don't have a pair of these, by the way, get hold of a pair of archery forceps because they'll let you get in there, grab the actual component, which I'm going to do. Oh, and it's a bit of a guess. I'm kind of guessing on this side of the board where it actually is. Going to need a bit more uh, work, I think, on that. <laughs> bit of cartography needed. So let's see if there's any sort of semi-decent ways. So I'm putting my finger where they are. Let's flip it over. <laughs> so it's it's in this region. <laughs> I'm gonna mark these out for you guys at home too. Let's see. Ah, good. So we've got a mark here. So this mark is in the in the center. So have a look here. This mark is in the center. So I'm thinking it's this, 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 and this is what we should be trying to remove. So I'm just going to give it a wee poke from the top. Sometimes I'm just giving it a little push on the tip of the iron, and I'm not pushing too hard because these are very fragile soldering iron so you don't you don't want to snap your iron in half do one side then the other then the other then the other it's saying the positive by the way is towards my left hand when you replace them so that's good i think we can tack these with a solder suck now We should be able to pop them out. It's very dark in there. Not sure if you boys and girls at home can see this. Yep, there's one. There's two. <laughs> so I've got two of these. Hundred. So I still end up with one spare, which is a bit worrying, but that's fine. So we know the positive is that end of the board, so we have to mount them with the negative on the opposite side. So that's that one there, just like that. I've got a uh, the battery in a Sharp X68000 to do and I'm wondering how much I can get away with like this through kind of keyhole surgery. I'm hoping a lot because I don't really fancy dismantling it. I'm really glad I went through the instructions again 
<laughs> I just went through looking for uh, anything that said 100 nanofarad, and that's where I found that. So we've still got one more 100 nanofarad in our box of tricks. So, so we've done this mod now. So we've done the power supply, we've done the balance caps on the motherboard. So the picture. We've upgraded the amplifier board and we're not seeing any 100 microfarad capacitors there mentioned. Ah, what's this one? C103. We'll check this board out then. This is one of the boards we did. Maybe it's that one. All caps populated and it says the 100 is in C301, yep, and C302, yep, so that's that one is okay. There's a picture of this board here but no mention of any mods on that one. No mention of any capacitors on that one. And then there was two capacitors on here which we changed which were the smaller size. So I guess we have a spare. So let's just reassemble this bad boy and we can uh, go. And again, I still haven't supped, suckled on my tea yet. That's okay. I'm gonna check everything out as we put it in there. We wanna make sure there's no shorts at all. Especially this board, it's a transistor, transformer mains board. So just pop that back in. Don't want to disturb the wiring too much. If you remember, we had a bit of a song and dance with that. There, yeah, that's sitting in just where it needs to be. I'm just grabbing the screws. <laughs> the screws don't want to. Uh, stay with the screwdriver they're not they're not quite magnetic or anchored in the same way as a a posi drive is or a phillips oh no so just getting that in position is painful enough <laughs> but i did it yahoo that's the one screw in there look at this one in there that's going to be a nightmare I'm sorry to I'm sorry to make you watch actually. I feel a bit guilty about that. But not guilty enough to to turn off the camera, I'm afraid. So if we're just putting a magnet on the end of the screwdriver. Let's see if that can hold that a bit better. Yes, it can. It's only four screws though. Okay, that's it. So just make sure we're going to get our green one now. We're going to wire this all up. So we're going to get this green one that had this, the loop on it on there first. So we can slide that down. It doesn't seem to want to go though. So apply a touch of a touch of heat to it. Yeah, that's fine. It's happy with the bit of heat. That's okay. Now that's soldered nicely. So I'm going to bend it down just exactly the way it was. It was quite nice and neat, wasn't it? So deserves to be put back as exactly the way as it can. I'm just going to solder the two 40 volt there. I'm going to solder the zero. Just holding it there for a moment, make sure it stays nicely. That's it. You've got these four little solder buckets on the pins. I do like that, solder bucket pins. We need to design some more stuff with solder bucket pins on it. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. There's a tiny bit of damage insulation there, but it's not of any any uh, issue. Now. Here, just a quick tip, if you've got some contact cleaner, it could be a reasonable time to kind of want to go through and kind of just give your pots a quick twist, yeah? So we've done that on those. I'm just going to do this 
<laughs> we're going to do this balance one. We're going to turn it because it's a bit uh, tricky. Get in there. Okay. There you go. That one's okay. All of these, all of these, you can see they're all stereo, that's why there's two lots for each one. So I'm just turning them one way, spraying in each, and then just turning them back and forth a couple of times. Sometimes this will get rid of that crackle. Sometimes you get that snap, crackle and pop when you're turning the knob. Okay, last one. And it evaporates nice and quickly, so don't worry about that. It's a bit like a brake and carb cleaner. <laughs> I'm just going to adjust these back up to where, where they want to be. Okay. And that one is already in the centre. Okay, so done that. Let's try to shove our various cards back in. That goes in that way. And that goes in that way. Had another one somewhere, this guy here. Brilliant, so I think we're good with those. Then we can put the case on. It's got rails in it, believe it or not. There go. Nice rails in there. Just get these screws in, and then we can put the last cards in. I think we've done, done a good job here. My word. What an adventure we've been in today. For you it's probably been what? Might be a 20 minute video, half hour? Maybe a bit longer, but for me, it's been a lot of the day. I've been uh, doing things in and out of the house. It's a Sunday today, so there's always a bit of calamity, isn't there, on a Sunday? Something to do. So that's those screws in. Oh, it's perched there. Disc adapter, tape adapter. Just, just eyeballing it to make sure I get this in the right way. So that is our tape adapter in. Closed. And then we have our disc adapter, which... When you're looking at it, you kind of go, which way around does it go? But that, I'm pretty sure this is component side up, so that'll be fine. Oops, no, not here, not quite. Yes, I think that's in now. Shut the door. And we're done. So that's this quad, um, what they quad 33, <laughs> quad 33 pre-amplifier I think you'd call them um, is all done and it's all working away hopefully I won't be able to test this because I don't have the rest of the equipment but I really I really can't believe uh, there's much to go wrong on it so apart from just having a nice clean and maybe a, a paint one day I think it'll be good to go for another 40 years hope that's of some use to you please check out Dada Electronics if you want to buy a kit or you know Farnell RS, your usual places, and if you want to buy all the parts independently, um, which I probably wouldn't bother. Pay the 12 quid, 20 quid, whatever data I want, it's going to save you a lot of time, and your time is valuable. As ever, thank you for watching.